RF man here. So I'm going to continue my discussion on class B and class E amplifiers explained. This is the class B amplifier that we're looking at right now. And later on in the next part of the video, we'll go ahead and modify this and convert it from a class B to a class E and then talk about the advantages. So let me just quickly show my setup. All right, I'm using a function generator with a frequency set to 13.56 megahertz and I'm able to adjust the drive level as you can see there. And I'm using a preamplifier to drive the class B amplifier. So I'll be driving it with about one watt or so. And while we drive it, we're able to look at the DC voltage and DC current. I have 24 volt power supply set up there. I have a separate power supply driving the preamplifier at 12 volts. And you can see I'm able to measure the ambient temperature here and then the case temperature of the device here as we drive this with more input power. And we'll be looking at the waveforms on the oscilloscope. And we'll be using a current amplifier, which you see there, to actually measure the drain current while the transistor is switching on and off. So let's go back to the PC board and see how we have this set up. Here's my oscilloscope probe to measure the drain voltage. And this is a snap-on current probe that can be used. It has no loading effect on the circuit because it's an inductive probe. And we can use that to measure the current and the voltage at the same time, and then look at the crossover during turn on and turn off. So we can just snap this back over here. I had to extend that trace upward so we could snap the current probe on there and get a good accurate reading of the waveform. So that's basically the setup. I've got a watt meter here so I can measure the output power. We can also calculate the output power from the waveforms on the oscilloscope, and we would expect those to correlate fairly closely. So this is a Daiwa watt meter, and it's set on the middle scale, 150 watts, so we'll be reading 10 watts, 20 watts, 30 watts. Remember, we designed this for 24 watts, so I'll be driving it a little lower than that. So that's the setup there. Uh, let's go ahead and switch this on here. And then we can take a look at our measurements. So we'll go ahead and turn up the drive. Okay, and we can see that the DC current is at about two amps at 24 volts. So we're drawing about 48 watts from the power supply. Uh, we'll calculate that a little bit more accurately when the time comes. And you can see we're monitoring the temperature there. So the temperature has already uh, risen from uh, 77 degrees to 108, and it will continue to climb as we go through this presentation and make our measurements. And here is our drain voltage waveform. Okay, now remember when we ran the simulation, we had a voltage waveform that looked very similar to that. So let's briefly go back to the SPICE simulation. Okay, here's our class B amplifier. We're basically looking at it with an L network which acts as a low pass filter and does the impedance transformation. And you can see the voltage waveform is very similar to the waveform that we're looking at on the scope. Okay, so that's the setup. And here we see the waveform for 
drain voltage. Now what I'd like to do is, bear with me a moment, I'd like to set this up so we can monitor the waveforms. There we go. Um, while we're driving this, okay, so we have channel one looking at the voltage, and then we have channel two looking at the current. So we'll go ahead and turn on channel two, turn off channel one, okay, and this is what the current looks like, current waveform. And let's just change the time base so we get a little better look at that. Okay, and we turn off channel two, turn on channel one, there's the voltage waveform, and when we turn both of those on, what do we see? We see the crossover that we were talking about in part one, right? So when the transistor turns on, the voltage drops, the current rises, we have quite a bit of crossover there, a lot of overlap between the voltage and current, and there's a lot of power being dissipated there. Okay, and then we have basically the same, it looks a lot better during turn off, right? The voltage basically rises as the current drops. We still have a little bit of crossover there, but not too bad, okay? So this is where power is being dissipated, where the voltage and current during turn on and turn off overlap. And if we go over and take a look at our temperature, Okay, this has been running for several minutes and it continues to climb. We're 131 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll continue to monitor that as we go. All right, so to set this up um, and look at the efficiency, we can take our current probe and remove that. And we can switch over to the output waveform. So. Go back to the scope here and turn off channel two. So we're only looking at the output voltage. Okay, and you can see here the way I have the measurements set up. This is giving me the RMS voltage of the sine wave that's being measured on the output side after the filter. So we have basically 31 point, we'll call it 31.3, fluctuating a little bit, which is perfectly acceptable. And we're gonna go ahead and take our calculator and we're going to measure what the output power is and see how closely that matches the measurements on the Daiwa power meter. So I'm gonna pause the video for a moment. Okay, so I'm now I'm back. I have a handheld calculator. So we can go ahead and calculate the efficiency. So this shows me on the scope, the peak to peak voltage. So E peak to peak divided by two gives me E peak times 0 0.707 gives me E RMS. So that's fluctuating, but let's call it 37 volts. So 37 squared divided by 50 is 27.38 watts. Okay, we're just applying Ohm's law. That's E squared over R. So it's ERMS divided by 50, which is our load impedance. And if we go over to the Daiwa watt meter and we look at the measurements, yeah, reading about 28 watts or so, so that's reasonable. And then if we take a look at the DC power, it's 24 volts times, let's call it 2.4. So that's 57.6 watts with the calculator. And if we divide the power output from the amplifier by the power output of the DC power supply, we have around 47.5% efficiency. I believe my original calculations on my slide were around 46. So results are very, very similar. And the amplifier has been on for several minutes now. And as a reminder, the, the bottom gauge 
is the ambient temperature and the top is the case temperature. If I just zoom in on here, you can see I have this spring clip holding the thermal couple down to the case temperature of the device. So we'll use the case temperature as a reference when we go ahead and compare class B to class E. What we would expect is a lower operating temperature would obviously be a higher efficiency. So if the class E amplifier is up around 90%, we should see a substantial decrease in the case temperature. So if we just monitor that, the temperature continues to rise a little slower now, about 141 degrees F. Looks like it's stabilizing somewhere around there with around a 47% efficiency. So this will be our baseline that we will use. Um, we'll go ahead and on the next part of the video, part three, talk about class E amplifiers, how to design them and how to test them. And we can then compare the results of the class E amplifier with the class B to see what improvements are realized. So that's it for part two. RF man, thank you.